for those who don't know me, I'm JT, also known as the High Street Hunter. Myself and my guys Rashawn and Gable are on a hunt to find the creative individuals behind the flyest up and coming brands making waves in the scene right now. This is Wade, also known as Wade London. Now, Wade has only been doing this for two years. Wade's consistent drops, eye-catching colours and gritty designs have made Wade London one of the fastest growing brands I've personally come across. But his 10k following and ever-growing brand is no accident. Being a friend of mine since school, Wade's steady rise is one that I've witnessed and one that I've always wanted to talk to him about. Although long overdue, we finally made it happen. So today, as you can see from my drip, we're off to meet my guy Wade London. This is someone who I've known for years now. I went to the same secondary school. I used to take him shopping now. Ask him, he'll tell you. Obviously, I've seen Wade and go from literally a boy to a man. You can see that through his fits. Started off with the custom bags, moved on to the custom paint splash Air Forces. I know you've seen that. And now he's doing everything, man, from the t shirt to the hoodies to the windbreakers to the flipping coronavirus mask. And really and truly, I just want to see how he was able to kind of galvanize his age group. I feel like his age group, that, that 16 to 22 year old age group, everyone's wearing that male or female. So today, hopefully, we can see how he did it and his plans for the brand in the future. But guys, as I always say, So you guys know what time it is, we're on to my favourite part of the show. The part of the show where you guys get to see the designer through the clothing. Let's go. These are hard, so what was the inspiration for these? I mean, I was, when, I go to, when I go to create something, I go to look for something that I haven't seen before or that I don't see anybody else doing. Mm -hmm. So at the same at the same point, I don't have any competition in a way. Mm -hmm. For example, like me doing socks, I don't really know anybody else since I'm doing so many different variants of colors of socks and things like that. Mm -hmm. So like these colors, I don't know, red's a popular color and off-white, it just looks clean with a lot of outfits. Yes. And yeah, that's what I was going for. I like things to look neat. So even with the, with the light blue ones there, I know light blue's, it's a summer color in it. Mm -hmm. and, there's not a lot of things you can wear of it, but there also is a lot of things. Like, for example, with a pair of shorts, it, it stands out, it stands still. out, and it's yeah. a game with the black with the luminous. So. Some people don't have um, as much of a budget as other people, so someone might want to be represented way, but maybe things might be too expensive. So then again, a pair of socks, everyone's happy to get. Like having that variety and change is different. Is um, is is good because. For example, everyone loves t-shirts, everyone loves jumpers. Mm. Like we need to either do something that's like a design that's no one ever seen before, or you need to do something where a lot of people aren't doing. So you're, again, you're in a category by yourself. Like already, I do I do a lot of things in it. So that's where I'm different from other brands. Like a lot of brands might only do tracksuits or hoodies, <laughs> t-shirts. When I start coming to socks, I start doing women's things. I start doing backpacks, little things. It's all different, like it's all adding to the to the names you get. Mm -hmm. So people might, someone might only know a certain brand because because they do jumpers. Yeah. But with mine, mine might not tie you to one thing. He does this. He does this. He does this. So when it comes to people speaking about being a fashion designer, I feel like this is this is kind of everything in general. A lot of people leave out the reality. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you have had conversations before where you've told me about almost like the mental side of yeah. being a young up and coming designer in terms of overcoming setbacks, whether that be with suppliers and whatnot, or as you said, not getting the reaction yeah, from, from sales and whatnot, from certain pieces. How do you cope with that? Like, what sort of things do you do? Like the mental side of things is what people don't talk about. And that's like being a young designer is hard. Like there's a lot of things behind the scenes that 
like it's make or break like for example a certain piece you might bring out you might this that might have been your only money you had at the, at the mm -hmm. time or something and you bring it out thinking that's going to do well and then you're stuck on all the pieces and you're thinking damn like is this it kind of thing like but have you been there before yeah yeah like there's been times like they might i don't know i might bring something out on a day and it didn't have the feedback i was thinking i was thinking like what like i might have like 60 pieces that i need to get rid of thinking like what am i going to do kind of thing and then start getting stressed thinking oh does no one like what i'm bringing out anymore is it is it worth it like there's, there's a lot of feelings like there's times where you're just sitting you're sitting down for hours just thinking like staring at the wall thinking like your phone's going off there's people shouting you and that, mm. you're just not replying like just thinking like what am i going to do more time if you really want something you'll find it like i was looking for supply the other day for a certain um, quality of thing and i was searching for days like, oh, like i can't find it let me look for something let me try to bring something else out that's thinking i like, don't quit yet then the next morning I woke up, search and search, and I found it. I was like, you know what? That was about being persistent. Mm. Like, if you want much more persistent, it all pays off. I'll take it for free. So, Aiden, what are you doing to these Air Forces here? I want to do a quick custom for you, bro. Just something different. Something different? Just, yeah, just for yeah. us, yeah? Yeah, just for you. Off of experience. Do you feel like you really know what will work and do you know what you're capable of yet when it comes to the customs? Do you feel like you have a limit? I, I kind of know my limits in it. Oh. Like, but I know I'm very creative as well, so I know a lot of things can run that you wouldn't think would run. Do you, mm -hmm. cool. do you feel like, maybe this is just my perspective, innit? On what I've seen, but do you feel like you were one of the first people to really do the customs? Like? Yeah, I think, right, yeah. I think like if you know, if you know customs and you know that like, from West London kind of thing, yeah. you would you would think I was one of the first people. Yeah. Like a lot of people from all over England started because of like, mm. because they saw it and then like, what well, this is different kind of thing. Yeah. And then obviously the only thing is you have to keep when you're in the custom game, you have to keep elevating, you have to keep doing something different. Do you get? Because a lot of people are trying to do what you're doing. So if you aren't doing a new best thing, then you might have to say goodbye to some of your customers. Now I want to see if you're willing to give these up-and-coming designers that free game that some people weren't willing to give to you. Yeah. So my final question is, what would be your main piece of advice to those people trying to do their thing within the fashion industry? My advice to you I would be would be don't give up. Don't give up black. Like, doesn't matter how hard it gets. You might have to take a break for a couple of days, for a couple of weeks, but don't give up. Because once you stay at it, as long as you're staying I would say once you're doing one thing towards your dream a day, one thing a day, it will pay off. Like, I'm nowhere near, like for me, I'm where you are. Like I, I still need game, like I still need to be taught. But like from where you are, like I've come a long way. I do know that, so I'd say you keep that boy. people watch this, now hopefully they're, everybody's they're able to board. take, yeah, do you know what I mean? They're able to take like different, for deep the advice you've given, even when you're not giving advice, everything you're saying now is a piece of advice to another creative, you know. So guys, thank you for watching another episode of Where's My TV's Drip Diaries. I hope you enjoyed this one. We got my young boy, Wayden. Obviously, you saw his customs, you saw his new gums, you saw his old gums. I hope you have learnt more about his brand, learnt more about him as a person, and I hope you guys continue to follow Wade London. Please feel free to message me, tell me if you know any more brands that we should work with. And yeah, man, what else to say? Keep it locked.